everyone welcome back again to uh, NPTEL online course on structure, form and architecture the synergy. Today we are at lecture number 14 and it is uh, all about the structural forms and shapes and also uh, particularly like it will have relation with the structural efficiency. So, in lecture number 13 that we have seen different kind of structural arrangement. Uh, like post beam, post uh, like then post slab, then wall slab and also uh, we have seen some different kind of elements of that. Now those uh, concept, the previous lecture concept, it will be helpful in this particular uh, lecture. So, we will try to understand uh, in, uh, in this uh, perspective. So, we have discussed uh, the structural form or something in relation to architecture earlier, but here it will be something different where uh, we will discuss about the basic shapes determination and the efficiency uh, subject to the load applied onto it. So, let us start it. In this particular uh, you know area that we all know the structural form or sometimes we also mention it as a shapes. So, that in relation to the pattern of the load it carry the internal uh, load uh, that will give some kind of form. So, the first point that it mentioned that it is basically the shapes of the structural element and the pattern of applied load. So, pattern of applied load means it is not we are talking about dead load or live load is basically the force that we talked about in previous lectures like compression, tension, torsion, bending axial load uh, like that and then it will basically um, determine the type of internal force that the structure uh, that gives. So, whenever we apply force that we already know that forces are always acting in pair. So, if there is reaction uh, action then there will be uh, the opposite uh, reaction and also the influence the magnitudes. So, this will also depend on the material property like what is the uh, load type compression okay then what will be the magnitude like how big it will uh, going to make the impact then this load type and magnitude of internal force uh, due to given loads affects the structural efficiency so now we have to understand like in a structural component whether it is beam or column or whatever the structural element will use to uh, make the arrangement and erect the building uh, as per the design, then on applied load how internally those elements are acting and based on the magnitude how we can define the efficiency. So, so that if we understand the right shape uh, that we can pick up, so that will make the structure efficient. So, many a cases uh, just uh, uh, we uh, go for a very heavy mass or huge structure. So, indirectly that will add up to uh, your dead load. So, we will come to that also how we can think of and what is the logic behind uh, modifying that thing. So, in this lecture uh, we will basically know three different type of uh, structural shapes and then we will discuss about how to improve the um, safe profile or the cross section of the structural element which will improve the efficiency. Efficiency means uh, it will not really uh, be compromised the load uh, taking capacity, but at the same time the material uh, reduction and also load reduction indirectly because if you really improve the section instead of a solid uh, beam if you can uh, really go for something like with a hollow beam where we can uh, you know uh, in a substantial manner we can reduce the um, dead load and at the same time we can also carry the load it is supposed to take then that will be efficient. Then quantity and quality of material will be determined on that. So, if you know that uh, the what will be the uh, load or the type of force will be acting to that element we picked up. Then accordingly we can design uh, the you know quantity of materials, what kind of composition or maybe uh, also the quality like um, uh, depending on this uh, uh, your elastic modulus or maybe all other property that we have discussed 
uh, earlier. So, that will be determined to this. Now, in this case, uh, this is uh, also taken from a book structure and architecture uh, by A. J. MacDonald. So, this uh, is another uh, very pictorial and very simple uh, representation and that this slice will be the basis of our further uh, you know discussion in this lecture. So, what is happening in this case? So, we can see this is uh, uh, a structural element, we can say a column and uh, in this case the load is applied in this fashion. So, can you say that what kind of you know pressure is being generated in this case? So, this is basically a compressive force that is going to uh, take place whereat it is in the tension. In order to retain its original position, it will try to uh, resist again that. So, then there will be the opposite reaction. So, that will be developed. Most importantly in this case all these forces they are acting on the same principal axis same you know uh, with uh, coincident with the principal axis. So, if this is your object this is your principal axis and load is acting on that. So, only uh, in this case either compression or tension will take place. So, this is one, but if you make this arrangement like this where load being applied from the top. So, in this case basically the bending will come to picture. So, perpendicular to the principal axis in this case principal axis is this one the main axis and then bending type internal force will be developed. So, whenever there is a bending, so two kind of uh, you know uh, scenario we will see that you know depending on the load if we take the same example. So, compression and then the bottom tension, this is second type that come to third type where it is maybe a staircase or the roof, it is neither on that uh, you know uh, like uh, uh, coincident with the axis or neither it is perpendicular. So, then in that case it will be something really uh, inclined force. So, these are very basic form, but if we just club this together and try to visualize the uh, you know application of this kind of arrangement we will get many. So, this can be the some column, this is some beam, this is something some staircase, uh, especially this one and this is maybe a part of the roof if we complete the picture and connecting the dots. So, these are the basis. So, again uh, with that I, I have again a thermocol just for this timing we consider this is the same object. So, if we just really uh, want to see that this is uh, basically the principal axis and when you apply load like this. So, either it will have some compression. So, you know this particular internal force will be created and if I want to pull it then the tension and when you put it like this. So, it is more like bending if you apply load on this and when it is slant. So, then there will be some inclined kind of force acting on that and then we have to go with some vector analysis to find the component acting on you know horizontal and vertical direction that already uh, like we know some of the uh, particular uh, you know calculation that in uh, physics. So, based on that uh, you know uh, principle like based on that kind of force that uh, the type of force and then also the magnitude. So, we have three category into that one is your form active kind of shape, one is your non form active and the other one is neither active neither non active it is somewhat in between uh, semi form active. So, these terminologies are little bit uh, uh, unusual in this case, but uh, I am sure that after this discussion after few slides we will have a better understanding on what exactly they are going to mean. So, before I go to uh, you know discuss each of them uh, with some you know specific example let us focus on this slide which is very important slide where we can see three types. Now, looking at this we have to get the idea like where they are different. The first one to get form active. So, the purpose that 
you know the internal force that created in the structural element should have either compression or tension and it act with that axis. It may be inclined when it is pitched roof or else it is the simple one. So, in this case it is basically the same. So, here if you see that it is this portion will have uh, uh, like this particular um, you know way of acting the force. Whereas, in this again this form um, uh, we have uh, those you know elements where we can only have this compression or tension that is also in the truss we can get it. And this is another arch where it is again a compression where all this load will be transferred uh, to that particular support. Now, come to non-form active as we mentioned that in this case uh, we will uh, basically see that uh, it is of bending in nature when uh, your uh, force is acting uh, just perpendicular to your uh, principal axis of the structural element and different magnitude when you can make it flat. So, again it is a bending, bending and again you can see that depending this may be a point load, this is two point load and this is a regular point load or sometimes it may be like uniformly distributed load. Now, in between these two that is semi active. So, where in that case the load being applied. So, it is not at the point. So, it is at the middle. So, it is like a flat. So, this portion will have some bending. So, it is a combination in between. In this case uh, instead of making this like um, uh, very pointed. So, here also you can get some curvature. So, this portion will have some bending and again it is uh, in between. So, if I just fold it. So, we will improve uh, it to towards the form uh, semi form active. So, it will come in a result end of semi form active form. So, it will be clear more clear once we just see some of the examples of this category. So, what exactly form shape form active shape? So, this is a structure uh, in which the internal force is purely axial that means, either tensile in nature or compressive in nature and it has relation, it has relation with the shape and its longitudinal axis and pattern of the load. So, in this case axis is this one, in this case axis is this one, this is also axis, this is this axis. But this uh, composition looks very similar, but if you see carefully the applied load is something like that. So, in this case compression, in this case compression, this is tension, this is tension. So, this kind of uh, element, the form we select uh, is basically a form active. So, criteria to say a form uh, like a structural shape uh, whether it is form active or not is basically the internal force is purely axial either tension or compression. Now, take this uh, picture as example. So, what exactly? So, you consider this as a rope. So, uh, you just fix uh, two points and just uh, put uh, a rope like this. Now, if you just let it be like this, uh, then uh, probably um, it will uh, take a symmetry depending on the self weight and you get some point like this, the curvature is same. But at the same time, you just apply load to this. So, probably it will readjust to the point and you will get something. This is a uh, you know first option, this is the second option. So, it will adjust its shape and where either it will be of tension, these are of tensile form active shapes that we also see in suspension bridges or you know cable suspended structures. So, there we can get this kind of uh, form active. So, where it is basically showing the tensile nature of the internal force being created. To just make the mirror image of that, so it will be the compression. Very interesting and in this representation, this is a pitch roof and also in the earlier picture we have seen like here it will be developed. So, it will put uh, some pressure on that. So, it will try to go apart from this so, tension uh, here in this case we will try to compress it. So, in this portion we will get compression uh, in the system. It is just with a two uh, point load and this is something with some arch. So, that 
also we can really get it. The adjustment can be done not only limited to this uh, you know suspension bridge or uh, maybe of this kind of arches, it may also be extended to the cell structure, some pneumatic structure where it can be adjusted. Say for example, this is just a you know ear pocket that normally we used to get when you you know order something or we pack something for the deliver to for safety of the product. So, it is uh, full of air, but uh, the main reason I just want to show that in this case if I put pressure, so accordingly getting adjusted, so this uh, portion the compression being created. So, if I put it here accordingly the profile got changed. So, if I just want to draw the same thing like when it is just a, a packet is something like that, now I put the pressure. So, it will take the form like this, if I put it there, so it will be something like this, if I put the pressure, so it will be something like this. So, whatever may be that pneumatic form, this is also called a pneumatic form, uh, we can create with this form active shape. So, this is uh, one kind of shapes and if we uh, want to know the um, efficiency. So, uh, these are the form where we will have max maximum efficiency, because that uh, in this case only one will be taken care of and it will have this uh, adjustment. Now, in this case uh, if you see this is one suspension bridge in New Zealand. Uh, where you can see this particular you know beautiful structure being created like again a rope. So, it is fixed up uh, fixed in two points and then it is getting adjusted whenever it is required and sometimes even uh, for uh, temporary bridge we also make with thread uh, like rope and some uh, you know wooden materials. So, this is one example of firm active shape. Now, come to the other one like this one basically it is representing this uh, tensile type that we have seen in this particular picture. So, we just uh, represent it with a case a live case study on that and then this one is just uh, the other one that uh, the compressive arch. So, here you can see this particular form being created uh, very beautifully. So, uh, see this particular efficiency. In this case, this is another example where you can see the very minimal thickness and all it is giving a tent kind of shape. So, again it is a form active shape. So, this kind of shale structure or something which will help us to go for form active and that can be also created with uh, membrane. So, the next example already uh, I have shown you this uh, picture in some other context, but here we are describing with the form active. So, here again uh, basically in this uh, you know membrane the tension is developed and only when the member is considered uh, this post this is the compression. So, again it is form active and you can see the efficiency like definitely the thickness and other thing will uh, be really uh, helpful. So, kind of stadium design kind of you know some uh, you know arch design where we can really go for this kind of form. Now, come to the non form active shape uh, in that picture we have seen that in this case uh, like the relation is uh, like it is perpendicular the load applied on the element is perpendicular to the uh, its longitudinal, uh, longitudinal axis or the principal axis and in that case purely bending moment and shear force that is the main uh, you know uh, internal force that being created due to uh, the you know relationship between the form uh, that is been placed like the element being placed and the applied load onto it. So, this is the case where you can see that this is something like a beam supported and then the load applied. So, it will have the bending and then, then shear uh, will get it some bending moment and then you have some shear force diagram to this if it is uh, something like two hand supported. And this is another one where it is uh, the representation of a tall structure where lateral load being placed. So, this is your uh, principal axis and then it is acting perpendicular to it. So, again it is something which is non form active. So, where bending uh, will take place uh, in this case. 
Now, if you take this example, this is just a bridge and um, this is a random example I have taken from internet, but you can see such many where uh, it is more predominant of this non-form active shape that being used in various structure even in the building as well where uh, is basically th for the bending and shear force will be the prime uh, uh, you, know, you know consideration and the form and its shapes will go with that relation. This is uh, from the building where again it is something like uh, you know you have series of columns and you have this beam. So, it is post beam structure, but again in this particular phase we are um, considering the um, purely bending and other thing into consideration. So, again it is non form uh, like non form active shape uh, kind of relationship. So, uh, now we know two type of such shape one is active form active one is non active. So, in active what is the uh, reason I am just repeating it. So, there basically uh, you will have pure axial internal force that is either on tension or compression and we have seen the example of your suspension bridge as well as this arch. We can also have some membrane structure, some cell structure. In non form active it is purely a bending and shear force and that too is most commonly being used in the building or in the flyover where those beams post uh, kind of structure is being placed. So, post uh, beam post linton you can more often it is basically non form active shape. Now, semi form active shape is in between uh, form active and non form active. So, it is basically a combination of both axial thrust and the bending moment shear force. So, you combine all together. So, in this case what is happening um, like uh, definitely uh, we have some kind of uh, you know uh, this particular form where this is a separate post and this is a post how they are connected to make this particular arch. Now, in this case what is happening how it is in between because if you go separately with this post and all. So, it will give you some of you know uh, make, making one member of this arch and all it will give you the form active shape, but at the same time if you just make it flat with this giving a support. So, it will give you the non form active, but in this case uh, we are very much choosy about selecting the material like whether we go with a solid rectangle cross section of that or instead of I section or maybe a box section. So, the reason is we can build with anything because it will have some purpose to carry some load, but in these three cases things will differ. We will come to that, but for this time being it is in between. Now, if you see this structure this is the same example uh, may be uh, like a replica of this kind of structure that have picked up. So, where uh, this is basically showing a semi form active structural system. Now, uh, how to improve the efficiency when definitely uh, we talk about the efficiency then uh, the form active will have the maximum and when you go for non form active it will not that efficient. Now, the reason now this slide is very important like in the previous example when we started this lecture. So, we can have this three type of uh, cross section can be used for this structural arrangement. Now, what is happening here? In this case, uh, if we go for a solid section, so based on this particular you know uh, shear force, what is happening this case that whole uh, portion will have see at the you know outer fiber will have the maximum uh, force. So, that means, uh, in this case high bending stress occurs at the extreme fibers only and most of the internal uh, component. Okay. So, they will have something which we can say that they are under trace. Okay. So, basically most of the material carries a low stress and therefore, inefficiently used. Now, we just remove it. If we change this solid section 
to I section, what is happening? Still uh, at this age, we can have the similar kind of uh, you know uh, behavior, structural behavior, but at the same time we can reduce it. And when you go for a box section, again we do the same. So, if you see this particular um, you know efficiency, if you uh, go with this kind of thing, like uh, the reduction of the material, because some of the part is not really very much responsible for you know bearing this particular stress and all. So, they are having, uh, they are carrying uh, less stress and that is why that can be removed okay, logically, so that we can get a better profile which can be used. So, that is increasing the efficiency. Now, efficiency in terms of we are reducing the material that means direct implication that we can say that there will be reduction in cost of the material, but in other direction that will also reduce the dead load. So, uh, we will have some reduction on load, but again we are not compromising, uh, compromising the you know capacity, the bearing capacity of the member, because uh, that is being selected based on uh, you know proper analysis that you know element selection that we have discussed uh, in uh, you know last to last class that uh, when we select the cross section we go through that how it will behave against the applied load onto it. So, the improved cross section uh, like I section or hollow box efficiency is increased by eliminating most of the under stress material and we create it hollow. So, this is one approach by which you can improve the shape of the cross section. Take other example, in this case it is a you know you just a very thin uh, plywood. In this case it will have this particular bend, so whenever this is having the bend, so the at this stage it is basically non form active okay? and to give support we could have two options we increase the thickness like this, which can really you know uh, helpful to make it stable, but here what we have done, increase in cost of the material as well as we have increased the you know what we say the date load. But compared to that if you go for something like folded plate, okay, then basically the thickness remains same, but we can substantially reduce the material because which are not really needed because of the most of the you know important uh, portion of the you know element where uh, you know it will take the essential stress uh, to make your structure stable and uh, safe. So, some of the portions can be removed easily. So, if you compare this thickness and this thickness is same, but you can easily compare how much reduction uh, being you know taken care of, how much material we have uh, reduced from this particular uh, block. So, this is very useful to uh, make your structure efficient. So, these are something where uh, improvement can take place and we can convert it to some, some kind of you know from uh, purely non-active uh, form to semi-active or something like that. So, let us take this example, uh, this is one uh, railway station I have picked up. So, if you see this particular uh, you know members, this particular truss, so it could have a very solid profile, right? but essentially if you see carefully that it has some punctures. So, that can be developed from I section also, you know um, like if I just want to reduce it. So, in that case we can have uh, some of the punctures in between. So, basically and that cannot be just uh, like uh, in order to reduce the weight or something to look very interesting in terms of design that has to be done with proper justification and we have to select that logically with calculation. So, that there will be no such compromisation on uh, like um, your um, uh, you know carrying uh, capacity or the bearing capacity of the element which will be used as a supporting structure. 
This is another one where uh, this is now being common where we have seen to create large span instead of a heavy beam we can go with very simple space frame. So, compared to a section uh, solid section. So, a truss can give you more uh, efficiency to come up with uh, the solution and the space frame is another where uh, we connect the truss in 3D. So, that it can uh, really uh, solve the purpose. There is reduction on the self weight and you can see the span also this being used normally for the airport uh, public station and it is possible like you know the purpose here is not to really have the floor on top of it or heavy load. So, it is just a cover. Uh, so, that we can go uh, for a light roof structure. So, this uh, kind of arrangement can give you the efficiency. Now, if you see that uh, we summarize here um, in this case like we start with the frame uh, like form active shape like your tensile main structure that we have seen in the sky uh, song uh, structure in Arizona or maybe some arts that we have seen. So, these are uh, much more efficient uh, on because that will handle it very carefully. Now, when you go for the semi form active, so it is in between, but we still have some chances to improve the cross section. So, instead of a solid hollow beam here only the truss portal being used. So, earlier it was just a solid member and now we just transfer uh, this thing in truss. So, there is reduction in the cross section, reduction in the material and so true with the reduction in the weight. Now, come to the non form active where it is basically your post beam kind of structure, some timber post, then the slab and in that case instead of uh, you know. Uh, huge slab and thickness we can have waffle slab where we you know from you know inside you can see that it is giving uh, uh, you know a, you know uh, adequate strength we can reduce the material wherever uh, the portion or of that element is uh, under uh, you know under stress or not really carrying um, this you know critical stress and other things. So, folded plate can, can be one of the option to transfer it and then we can also go for the space frame structure to again create the volume. So, wherever uh, we want this thickness we can have, but depending on the calculation and proper selection. So, it needs a very careful analysis to select the element cross section uh, and without compromising uh, the desired stress level that it should take when load is applied onto it and we can reduce it or the cross section material uh, in you know many purposes one uh, to reduce your uh, the material use and that related to the cost and as well as the dead load. So, we can optimize this thing with some improved cross section and if you uh, you know see now in this direction. So, if we go for a um, normal frame structure with a beam column that is not as much efficient than if you go for some cell structure membrane structure, but we cannot create this uh, all the time because of some other purposes. Because when we go for the high rise building, so floors are there on top, so we cannot, but wherever there is a chance that we can create this kind of structure to create uh, the span or something like that we can really go for uh, this form active space and wherever it is possible we can really improve the cross section to be used as the element. So, this is the overall discussion that we have and then uh, in summary. So, what we learn form active the other is your form non form active and one is your semi form active. So, these are three different thing and one other thing is the improvement in their cross section and longitudinal profile to improve the efficiency. In terms of efficiency if you go uh, like this is the highest, this is the medium and this is the low efficiency and in this form active your basically internal load will be axial in nature and when non form active bending and 
shear force will be the picture and here it is the combination of axial thrust plus bending plus your shear force. So, that is the overall thing. In short, if I just try to draw a picture an arch or uh, maybe a suspension bridge, uh, these are all of like you know uh, structure of the form active in the non form active, uh, it is just uh, the pillar uh, that is you know tends to bending. So, that is non form active and semi form active is the frame that we can use and in order to improve it we can reduce it, we can replace it with the straws and all. So, that way we can um, improve the efficiency. So, that has a relation in this lecture we learned that the relations, the efficiency of the structural element to be used depending on the form selection and how you can improve that with some you know analysis. So, uh, with this I conclude here and these are uh, the few books that I also referred in previous lecture. So, go through it and uh, with that uh, we conclude and next uh, so far we had we mentioned about the structural material so many times. So, we will focus on that in the le next lecture. So, till then I uh, again uh, thank you all to take part in this course. Uh, thank you.